I think the future is extremely bright for Tesla going forward. I think that they have a monopoly in multiple areas within the EV networks. And I, I, I just want to see I, I want to see it like the overall market. I want to see it come back in a little bit. Give me a better entry point. Took my chips off the table. We'll see. If you like the circus, you will love today's video featuring a number of performances from a number of clowns, all relating to Tesla stock. If barbecued clown and roast chicken aren't to your liking, maybe check the links in the pinned comment and check out some of the exclusive content available to my Twitter subscribers and or over on Patreon. You've been warned. Let's get to Tesla here. The stock soaring 4% today on the back of the GM charging network deal. The EV uh, maker locking in 11 straight days of gains, tying its longest ever winning streak. Steve, you took extreme measures when it came to your Tesla position. I did. So originally when he, when he uh, had that chart up around $100, I bought my first leg at 105 sold it in the 190s, bought it back above 200 bought it again as it dipped below. And then I just this he, he alluded to it or he said it. 11 straight up days. I think the future is extremely bright for Tesla going forward. I think that they have a monopoly in multiple areas within the EV networks. And I, I, I just want to see I, I want to see it like the overall market. I want to see it come back in a little bit. Give me a better entry point. Took my chips off the table. We'll see. So how do I say this politely? I'm just kidding. I don't give a f about being polite. This guy is an absolute clown. Although the show is called Fast Money. Think about it for a moment. The show is literally called Fast Money. Is there such a thing? Let me just restate exactly what we heard from our genius trader here. One by one. He bought in the low 100s. He then sells in the high 100s to make a bit of fast money. Then obviously you've got to put some money aside for the capital gains that you have to pay on that fast money that you just made. So you've got less capital to reinvest. Buys back in the 200s. Stock comes back a little bit. Buys more in the high 100s. Then sells everything in the low 200s, then explains that Tesla has an incredibly bright future, a monopoly in multiple areas, blah, blah, blah. But he's hoping the stock comes back a little bit more for a more attractive re-entry position with less capital left over after all the money's put aside for capital gains taxes on the fast money he just made. This guy's such a genius. He should probably start a YouTube channel. The lesson here, ladies and gentlemen, is don't be this guy. How incredibly idiotic to claim that Tesla has a really bright future to demonstrate that you're an idiot because you bought Tesla stock in the high 100s, sold in the low 200s instead of holding it, buy back in the 200s again. It might be exciting, but this is not a winning strategy. Or maybe I'm just biased. After all, I'm a dumb motherfucker who's been buying Tesla stock now for more than the last seven years straight. And idiotically, I haven't sold a single share of Tesla stock to lock in some fast money and then pay some capital gains tax in that entire seven plus year period. My capital gains tax bill on Tesla stock so far, zero dollars. My fast money on Tesla stock, zero dollars. I'm such a dumbass. I definitely should have locked into profits along the way when it went from $13 to $14. Probably should have sold a bit there and then hoped to buy back again and then ended up buying back at $30 and then sold at $35 and then bought again at $79 and then sold a little bit of that at $100. Thought I was a genius and then bought back in at $220 and then you get where I'm going with this, right? Unfortunately for me, given the fact that I'm not actually a genius and I don't have a crystal ball and can't time the market, silly me didn't lock any short-term gains, no fast money for me. Instead, I'm just sitting on a few million dollars of unrealized gains. Now, I know it sounds obnoxious to point that out, but it's just true. Seems to be working out okay. Maybe slow money is a decent strategy after all. In 2030, we're gonna look back. I'm gonna look back anyway and be roasting this guy. With Tesla's market cap in the, let's say, half a trillion dollar range, he sells all of his Tesla stock. The stock's still down about 40% from all-time highs, despite claiming Tesla has an incredible future, just to hope that maybe there'll be a more attractive re-entry price, which when you factor in his capital gains tax would have to be significantly lower than where he sold and where we are today. The optimism surrounding the charging network deals with Ford and GM is just, it's tremendous. I mean, Piper had an interesting note saying that Tesla could earn as much as $3 billion over the next seven years from these agreements, uh, Bono. And I mean, if you liked Apple services revenues, maybe the, maybe this is sort of the beginning of, of something like that. I mean, that you hit the nail on the head definitely speaks to recurring revenue, which you, you definitely like. I think really, you know, the question is about momentum and, and short term trading activity. And to the other two previous panelists point, I just think it's a bit overstretched here. With that said, Tesla just t seems to have a mind of its own. This stock could go up another 20 percent, 30 percent from this. And I don't think any of us would be surprised. So I think I'm with Carter in that. Not that I would be just shorting it here. But if I've already been in, Steve said he's in. He has about one hundred and five dollar cost basis. If I am in there, I'm definitely writing calls if I don't want to share, if I don't want to sell outright. But I'd probably be uh, taking some cash and looking to deploy it uh, elsewhere. Wow. Panel full of genius traders today. 
What can some of those profits sell the Tesla stock and put some of that capital somewhere else? Where? Where? Where would you be putting that capital after your capital gains tax is paid? Where are you going to find a much better return than Tesla stock if you just held it? Remember, you got to pay your capital gains tax. You've got less money left over after you're locking your profits. So uh, any suggestions? You guys have no fucking idea how much I'm looking forward to revisiting these calls and roasting these fools in 2030 and beyond. And they're talking about locking in some profits, selling the stock today with a market cap, give or take half a trillion bucks. With Tesla on the cusp of solving autonomy, an unassailable lead, Tesla's so-called competition literally coming all over themselves and then to Tesla for help. Short-term thinking. Can you even call it thinking? Yeah. You sold that 105 tranche at 190. Yes. Yeah. 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 So sold at 105. And then also after buying back in at a much higher price, also sold at what, 190, did you say? And, and just to be clear, I'm out of the name right now. I want to take a look and see how it reacts next week. Yeah. Guy, next move. Higher or lower for Tesla? You look at Carter. You look at Carter's charts. I mean, 50% retracement one, right up against the downtrend line two. And we've been in this downtrend for a few years now. It's a pretty significant one. The bounce has been historic. But I mean, the trade that Steve just put on is, is fantastic. I mean, wait for a better entry point. I don't think this is the entry point to get long. Wait for a better entry point, huh? Good luck. Hmm. You know what? Kind of reminds me of a video I posted back in 2019, which for the record was posted on December 10th, 2019. So let's just have a look at when that video was posted. Hmm, here we are, December. Yeah, we'll use the 13th, close enough. What happened after I posted that video? Hmm, let's see. Tesla stock was $23.89 per share split adjusted a few days later. A couple days before, 22 bucks. We'll be generous. We'll use the 23.89. Tesla stock, since I posted that video, has basically increased 10 times in value. Now, sure, it's been volatile along the way, but the risk reward when I posted that video of waiting for Tesla stock to dip for a more attractive entry point didn't seem to be there. In fact, in my own words in that very video, let's just listen to what I had to say. Obviously, it was pure luck, but let's listen anyway. By the way, shout out to the OGs who saw this. Let me know in the comments below if you watched this original video. I've been reading all of your comments and I've noticed a lot of you guys are saying that you're waiting for the next dip in Tesla's stock price before buying. Well, I don't have a crystal ball, but I do have a brain and so do you. So let's fire up our neurons together and attempt to deduce the most probable near-term direction of Tesla's stock price. Spoiler alert, it's not down. Now, I can't see into the future. This video isn't a claim about what will happen to Tesla's stock price. Anything could happen. I'm just looking at the facts and doing my best to understand the most likely outcome. Tesla has a slew of good news on the horizon. Unless something unforeseen and unexpected occurs, like Elon dropping acid with Joe Rogan or somebody turning off the simulation, it seems improbable that Tesla stock will trend any direction but up. The tailwinds are simply too strong. Let's look at why. All right, you guys get the fucking point. I called it. Now, I didn't know what was going to happen, but like I said in the intro, I have a fucking brain and I used my brain and it seemed pretty unlikely, just in terms of probabilities, that Tesla was going to be lower in the future versus higher in the future. Not a complicated thesis. If you guys want to watch the original video, go find it. It's easy. It doesn't even clock in at 12 minutes. Great opportunity to once again plug AG1, link in the comments. That was about all I could get done in a single day back then. The point, once again, waiting for Tesla stock to dip. Good fucking luck. I mean, it might work out. Anything could happen after all. When I posted that video, I didn't see a scamdemic shutting down the entire world. A few months later, that is exactly what happened. Yet despite that, Tesla stock still surged anyway. Now, you may have noticed in that video, we saw Tesla stock price chart. I actually looked at the chart. In fact, let's bring it back up. This is really important. So this was me running through back in 2019, Tesla stock. Since IPO, the stock's performance, the chart, notice something looks a little bit different to Tesla stock today. At that point, a lot of people who... Don't think like the people on Fast Money don't think. Looked at the stock chart and thought, oh, well, shit. It didn't really go anywhere for a few years and then it went up a lot. It's obviously going to come back down and there'll be a more attractive entry point in the future. So I'm going to wait to buy a Tesla stock once it dips again. This is how a potato would reason. If we go up the intelligence hierarchy just a little bit, I don't know, maybe a slug or even a bacteria might think, hang on a minute. What the stock's done previously and historically doesn't fucking matter. What matters is the future of the company, their execution, revenue, profits, and so on. What does that look like? painted a very different picture. And again, the reason I made this video, because I've been reading the comments on my early videos and people were literally saying, I'm gonna wait for the stock to dip, it's up too much, I'm gonna wait. I tried to save people, I tried to warn people, this video aged like a fine fucking wine, literally a 10X since posting it. This visually sums things up in a nutshell. That's what Tesla stock looked back then. Some of the comments on this video, after I posted this, bro, you don't know what you're talking about, it's up so much, wait, it's gonna come back, it went up too fast, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, bro, did you even listen? Have you done any numbers at all? Clearly not. So the moral of the story is obviously, one, 
You should never listen to anything I've got to say. I'm not credible. I don't have a crystal ball. None of my predictions age well and my reasoning is completely off point. Two, waiting for Tesla stock to dip is a great strategy. What could possibly go wrong there, especially if you believe the company has an incredibly bright future? And three, that call in that video from the past was obviously just pure luck anyway. So just, I'm just lucky. Plus, Tesla's gone up a lot since then, therefore, and you see what I did there? There's not much worse than having an IQ of 103, thinking it's 160 and believing you truly are a genius who can time the market and are taking the huge outsized risk of trading in and out of an extremely volatile stock whose future is incredibly bright. Many folks, myself included, can easily see Tesla stock doing a 10x or more this decade. But there is something even dumber than that. Speaking of having an IQ of 103 and thinking it's 160, this from everybody's favorite destroyer of capital, the man whose company or investment fund is known as Standstill Capital, and that's being generous, back on the 13th of January, 2023, quote, these Tesla price cuts have, in my opinion, completely de-risked the fundamental bear case. I actually just added significantly to our short position at $116.99 99 per share after previously intending to leave it in rundown mode as I think this confirms another 90% downside for the stock. <laughs> this guy, f dude. Now, this same moron has been shorting Tesla stock for essentially a decade straight. Has not learned his lesson. In fairness, I think the guy's severely mentally ill, suffering from psychosis and or some serious issues. I'm not joking. You can't be that dumb for that long. Something's wrong with the guy. His brain doesn't work and he doesn't realize it. These are just the facts. But <laughs> you know what's even worse than shorting Tesla stock at $116.99 per share? By the way, it's more than doubled since then. Ouch. Shorting Tesla stock at around $113 dollars per share not even kidding the balls on this guy to actually disclose his short position on tesla stock on cnbs i mean he can't even delete a tweet and make it disappear like mark could 35 seconds let's just listen to this guy holy fuck. Bad. not for the past year but more recently and i actually shorted more today okay. so and, you and, shorted and, more the, tesla today today yeah i mean i i think look i think tesla's been a phenomenal com company i think elon musk is a genius um but, you know, a $380 billion market cap against the General Motors at 50, uh, you know, more, more than probably the top five automakers combined. Tesla's now losing market share. They're cutting price. BYD is introducing a luxury uh, a version over in, you know, over in China. And, you know, I, it's a phenomenal company, but it's not worth $380 billion in my, in my opinion. Funnily enough, I actually agree. It wasn't worth $380 billion when he shorted it. Worth over a trillion when he shorted it. I think Tesla's fair value today is probably around two trillion bucks. So we agree, but not for the same reasons. Just imagine the amount of brain damage to short a stock whose history, uh, never been a good idea to short Tesla, it really works out. Even if you think the valuation makes no sense, you just look at what's happened in the past and go, hmm, just about everyone who thought it was a good idea to short Tesla stock has suffered third degree financial burns. I'm really taking a big risk here. And the poor clown, this guy thinks that Tesla's just a car company. He's comparing the valuation to car companies who are going to go bankrupt, who make internal combustion engines and thinking, oh, this doesn't make sense. Not only that, but he then takes the outsized risk of shorting the stock at 113, actually less, because he shorted that day. The $113 was intraday after close. He shorted earlier in the day, closed at 110. It was even low, it was close to $100 earlier in the day. So this guy shorted at just over $100 per share in January, 2023. So, like I said, the only thing dumber than short-term trader mentalities, especially when it comes to Tesla stock, is shorting the fucking stock. <laughs> Idiot. The stock was down nearly 80% when he went short. Sometimes people can be too smart for their own good. Despite my extremely arrogant YouTube persona, I actually have a great deal of humility. I recognize my limitations. I know how big my brain is, and it's nowhere near big enough to be timing the market. Trading in and out of extremely volatile stocks have a very bright future, so I don't even try. Now a few absurd words from Gordon Johnson's number one apprentice. Well, on Thursday, General Motors announced that they'll be partnering with Tesla to gain access to the 12,000 EV charging ports across North America. GM CEO Mary Barra stated that the new deal will save the company up to 400 U.S. dollars in EV infrastructure. 400 U.S. dollars? Million. Million, thank you. And like Ford, General Motors will start installing Tesla's charging ports in their vehicles starting in 2025. Joining us is Roth Capital Partners Senior Research Analyst Craig Irwin. Craig, it's good to see you. We've been sort of trying to figure out what exactly this means. Among other things, sort of, is there, are there financial implications for Tesla? Like, this is obviously being seen as a win for Tesla. I'm just trying to figure out why. 
So it's, it, you know, Ford and General Motors, obviously it's good for both of them because uh, their customers are not going to deal with the issue of range anxiety. Uh, range anxiety is actually very real. Um, you know, I imagine, you know, uh, having to drive half an hour, 45 minutes to go to a fast charger. Um, that, that's a, it's a pretty frustrating thing. And I've lived through that. Um, for Tesla, you know, there's a, there's a few different things in place. So one is, yes, you know, I can't imagine them not wanting to make money on this. So are they going to charge uh, Ford and General Motors the same price for their customers to access uh, the supercharger network? Or uh, are we going to see them paying premium? I would not be surprised if they were uh, paying a typical premium. Speculation alert. I got no inside info, but here's how I would do things if I were Tesla. One, GM releases an app. Their customers need to use this app to gain access to Tesla superchargers and they have to pay a monthly fee. Tesla takes a huge cut of that monthly fee. That's how Tesla makes money on this. A small subscription fee enabling GM users to use Tesla chargers. It's that simple. The same for Ford. Don't know what the fee is. Pull the number out of my ass. $12.99 a month. Let's say Tesla takes half, which is extremely generous. They should take the whole thing, but let's just say they take half. Called $6.50 per month per customer that has access to Tesla supercharging network. Barely moves the needle, like I said. This is not meaningful to Tesla's bottom line, but it's something. I think that's the best way this works. Charge everyone the same amount to actually charge. Non-Tesla customers have to subscribe to access Tesla's charging network, pay a monthly subscription. GM and Ford would have conniptions if Tesla forced them to use a Tesla app to access the network. Probably not going to happen. So this is how I expect things to roll out. Of course, it is pure speculation, but it makes the most sense to me. GM releases an app for their electric vehicle customers. Ford has an app for their electric vehicle customers. And through that app, their customers can buy a monthly subscription and then gain access to Tesla charges. Simple as that. Any other ideas? Let me know in the comments below. Versus, uh, versus the Tesla customers. And then you have to look at the impact on the Tesla brand. So nothing is going to irritate a Tesla owner more than uh, lining up behind a bunch of uh, vehicles from Ford and General Motors. I mean, imagine a big, a big Hummer is going to take a charger for an hour in front of you uh, while, while you've got to go and do your, your errands and get your groceries. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's not going to be something where people are going to say, oh, great, that, that car has, uh, you know, General Motors badge on it. But, uh, you know, the charger says Tesla, I paid for that. What's up with that? It's not going to be good for Tesla's brand, um, but it will be good for their access to um, subsidies under, the, under the, um, the infrastructure bill. So, you know, lots of things in play here. You know, people are speculating about what it means for earnings, but it's blatant speculation because we really don't know what the pricing is going to be at this point. So then I was going to ask you about biggest uh, winners and losers here. Obviously, the losers might be some of these other Tesla drivers, as you mentioned, stuck behind a line of Ford and GM drivers. Yeah. But what about some of these yeah. other car brands? Does this perhaps force Honda and other brands to try and come to the table as well? You know, I think I think actually some of the biggest winners are going to be the other network operators because it's going to give pricing visibility on uh, the sale of electrons. Moron, a stupid person. Craig Irwin, a person of low intelligence. Yes, according to Craig Irwin, legacy automotive companies like GM and Ford, the second and third largest producer of electric vehicles in the United States, although they're a drop in the bucket compared to Tesla, those companies now adopting Tesla charging as standard. Tesla's plugs on their own vehicles starting in 24 and 25 is going to be good for the competing charging networks. I mean, can't argue with dictionary definition of a moron. So Electrify America is owned by Volkswagen. Um, they have a fantastic uh, fast charging network across North America, you know, and then obviously EVgo has a, has a really solid uh, fast charging network as well. I believe the odds of Craig Irwin actually believing what he just said, the Electrify My Asshole network and the EVgo networks, good, 0% probability. No chance at all he believes that. He can't, he's not that dumb. The guy can tie shoelaces. He knows how to put on a suit and talk. I mean, there's no possibility he believes what he just said, surely. You know, of the roughly 26,000 uh, DC fast chargers, half of them, more or less, um, just under half, are, are, are operated and owned by Tesla. So those other, uh, those other owners of the, of the infrastructure, I think, get a little bit more price visibility and quite possibly more demand. He did just say that out loud. After this deal, the announcement of GM, so it's GM and Ford now, Adopting Tesla charging standard, their customers gaining access to about half of Tesla superchargers is going to possibly create more demand for competing charging infrastructure that sucks shit, is broken half the time, is slower, and is a terrible user experience. He's definitely apprenticing under the glass clown, no question. Um, across the board, this is going to be good for EVs. Um, it's going to make it um, 
you know, more competitive. Uh, it's going to make it more um, realistic for drivers to be able to actually get out there and go from A to B long distances and not have to worry about charging. And, uh, you know, I, I, I think this is a great move for Tesla. It's a great move for both General Motors and Ford. Uh, Craig, I want to dig a little bit more into what you mentioned about some of the other charging networks. Because if you look at EVgo today, if you look at ChargePoint today, if you look at Blink today, they're all down. So if you're right, it seems the market is sort of fundamentally misunderstanding what this means for overall for charging networks. Should people be buying those stocks today as we're seeing that dip? Things are about to get rather interesting. For those who aren't aware, Craig has had an absurdly low price target on Tesla stock for years, yet despite his absurdly low price target and claiming that Tesla's egregiously overvalued and Tesla doesn't have anything Toyota doesn't already have and other bullshit, the guy doesn't have any testicles whatsoever and has never advised investors to act on his price target. Never short Tesla stock, don't even sell it, just hold on to it because it's very volatile. I don't even believe in my own comments and research. So now he's been asked explicitly, should investors be buying the stocks of competing charging networks? If I were more cynical, I might think that Craig knows that's a terrible idea. And he does have a heart, even though he says really dumb things. So is Craig now going to advise investors buy these stocks or pussy out? Because again, he doesn't have a pair of testicles and doesn't really believe what he says anyway. Over to you, Craig. So, so investors don't discern too terribly well between uh, these companies. Actually, you know, Tesla is uh, very much a misunderstood company, in my, in my opinion, too. So um, Blink, I think this is a positive because Blink does operate its own network and Blink is OEMing charge equipment um, with credible suppliers. ChargePoint, you know, I absolutely hated their stuff when I had to fast charge on a, on a ChargePoint um, DC fast charger. It was a horrible experience. I did not like that. You know, they do very, very well in, in level two. That's where they make all their money. Um, you know, this puts more pressure on them to get it right. Um, you know, the, the network operators, I think, are, are going to get price visibility. And price visibility is a very important thing. Can you make money selling electrons? Tesla's obviously going to want to make money selling electrons. You know, if you think about Elon Musk's uh, political posturing in public, you know, I can't see that really helping him getting a, a proportionate share of the uh, the uh, the funding from the infrastructure bill. You know, reality is he's probably going to get a minor share and the other network operators are going to get a major share or else he wouldn't even be playing to uh, to open up the network to these other OEMs. You know, to, to come back to Tesla. What a surprise. The gigantic vagina known as Craig Irwin has dodged the question and is now trying to redirect the conversation back to Tesla without actually explicitly answering whether or not investors should be buying stocks in competing charging networks. What a pussy. And don't get me wrong, I love pussies, just not that kind. So to recap, if your brain is very small like mine and therefore you're not enough of a genius to time the market every single time, it's possible that waiting for Tesla stock to dip and or trading in and out of Tesla stock to lock in some short-term gains, you might even call some fast money, may not be the best strategy to create long-term wealth. And also, shorting Tesla stock is a really good idea if you have a humiliation fetish. Otherwise, it's probably questionable at the best of times. But who am I to say anything about anything? I'm just some dumb idiot on the internet, doesn't know anything about anything, and clearly my historic record of reasoning has been completely off the mark. Therefore, I have no credibility whatsoever, and you should not pay attention to anything I ever say about anything ever at all, period. Maybe listen to Gordon and Craig instead. Athletic Greens AG1 has given me a massive, meaningful boost in energy, allowing me to do a lot more every day, including using my brain more and using my body more. I highly recommend you guys and girls check it out. Athletic Greens AG1 is an excellent way to fill in nutritional gaps. It's got 75 high-quality vitamins, minerals, and whole food source nutrients, plus prebiotics and probiotics and digestive enzymes and adaptogens to help you deal with stress. Plus, if you click the link in the pinned comment or head to drinkag1.com slash SMR, you can get yourself a one-year free supply of vitamin D3 and K2. But don't take my word for it. Here's what some of you guys and girls have to say. AG1 has changed my life. I was, as you described, treating myself like a circus, ate like trash, rarely exercised, used alcohol as a stress crutch, cannabis also. AG1 is what gave me the kick in the ass, got me back to the gym, motivated me to do more for myself, family, my business, etc. Keep doing what you do. Now, I know there's some skeptics, the same kind of people who think Elon Musk is a fraud reading this going, what do you thought? There's no way that's possible, bro. It must be a placebo effect. Believe it or not, this is a recurring theme. If you give your body everything it needs to feel and perform its best, including having a lot more energy, you'll need ways to use that energy. For me personally, that includes more exercise, moving my body more, more social activity, and more cognitively demanding tasks, including producing a ton of exclusive content over on Twitter 
and on Patreon, plus my daily YouTube uploads. The proof's in the pudding. On to another testimonial from a viewer of this channel. SMR, you asked me to provide feedback on AG1. Here it is. It has helped with mental acuity, stamina, and intestinal waste management. <laughs> uh, can't read between the lines. It certainly helps with regularity and digestion. That's what the digestive enzymes are for. It has also dramatically reduced my cravings for sugar. You guys need to stop eating sugar. It's fucking poison. I'm 50, 5'9", and overweight, aka a fat motherfucker. I think that's a technical term for overweight, isn't it? Is it fat motherfucker or obese? I can't remember. I average 100 hours a week in the West Texas oil fields as a safety supervisor. Jesus Christ, dude. No wonder you're struggling to keep your weight under control. 100 hours a week. Brutal. It has helped me lose weight. It is not an appetite suppressant. It can help fat people suppress cravings and motivation to be healthier is critical for changing your diet. Love you, brother. Again, this is a great point. It's something people really don't seem to grasp. If you have more energy, everything becomes easier. It's like turning on easy mode for life. A few years ago, before I was taking AG1, my health was trash. I was struggling to get through the day, had afternoon fatigue. The last thing I wanted to do was either use my brain or move my body. Didn't have the energy. Now, my biggest struggle every day is figuring out ways to use that energy. I'm exercising way more, doing a lot more with my friends and family. And of course, my work output has increased substantially. And you can fact check me. Check out the average length of my videos I was posting to YouTube three years ago. Need I say more? And one final testimonial. Love this one. Okay, here's the deal for me with this AG1 shit. I'm 41 years old and not the type to eat, drink, smoke, or sleep healthy, so I was skeptical. That being said, here's what I experienced. Day one, meh. Day two, afternoon fatigue was about 45 minutes late. Day three, zero afternoon fatigue. Day four, zero afternoon fatigue plus extra energy. Day five, again, zero afternoon fatigue plus energy, wondering, what the f really? See, this is the thing, right? The results for many people are just almost too good to be true. This, this is the same experience I had. My afternoon fatigue just vanished out of nowhere. I'm like, wait, what the f Why am I not tired in the afternoons anymore? Surely, it's not that AG1, is it? Turns out it was. Day six and seven, same thing. Day eight, same thing. Plus, I had the want to get things done around the house that I normally would slack off and not get done. Again, the point, extra energy, you'll need to use it, you'll find ways to use it. Day 9, 10, and 11, and today is day 12. I f***ing love it. So however you managed to get me to buy it, I'm so glad you did. Thank you so much, SMR. It really changed me so far. Guys, this shit really works. Just try it. By the way, this is the reason I continue to relentlessly promote AG1. A lot of people get real f***ing mad in the comments. Oh my god, Snake Oil Salmon sold out. Oh my god, he's a scammer. This is fraud. But Constantly... I'm pretty sure everyone making these comments is also currently short Tesla stock. I'm not particularly concerned about people having a negative perception, those folks suffering from small brain syndrome, still living in my bum's basement syndrome, etc., writing mean comments, claiming AG1's a scam or it doesn't work. I mean, bro, when I get feedback like this, this is what keeps me going. And remember, there is a 90-day money-back guarantee. There's nothing to lose here. Just try this stuff for a month, and if you don't get these results, get your money back. See, it's a literal no-brainer. It's an IQ test at this point in time. Testimonial after testimonial after testimonial like this. Get your money back if it doesn't work. Just try it for a month and if it doesn't work, get your money back. Today's the day. It's finally time. Be like this guy who was a massive skeptic, but finally, after a thousand promotions in a row, caved in, tried AG1 and has results like this. Head to drinkag1.com slash SMR or click the link at the pinned comment and please let me know how you're feeling in a few weeks time. Now, if you'll excuse me, time to put my extra energy to good use. I'll be recording some more exclusive content for Patreon and my Twitter subscribers. So click the link at the pinned comment See you over on Twitter and or Patreon. And don't forget to grab your AG1. Love ya.